In this video, I will explain how this form works. This is the page that we're on. So here we have in the white border, the form with form elements. This is a select element. We can choose any one of our dimensions. Now, the dimensions are not going to change any of our calculations, nor will they change the dimensions of the triangle. They're only the units. And no matter what units we have, whether they're millimeters or miles, the Pythagorean theorem holds true that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the square root of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And we know that 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. You add those two together, you get 25. You take the square root of 25, you get 5, round it off to the nearest one place. But when we change any of these values, say we go to 45, and we get this new calculation. And if we go to 34 for our B side, so now we got 34, it changes the calculation up here, and also it changes our angle, because our angle, this is the arc sign. We use the arc sign because we have the ratio. B divided by C is the arcs. Give the, to get the angle, we use the arc sign. If we had the angle, we would have to convert to radians to get the, and use the sign to get the ratio. So basically, you would use the Pythagorean theorem to do a lot of different calculations. Suppose you knew this side of a building, and you knew how many feet you had to anchor some kind of a rope or some kind of a cable. You would know, you need to know how long the cable would be, and you would use the Pythagorean theorem for that. So you can also figure out the angles, and it's all done in the calculations up here. But in this application, we start with knowing, they call the knowns, is A, the base, and then B, the height of the angle. Okay, so now this round is where you can determine how many numbers do you want to round your number off to. We can go up to 10, which is a lot. This number right here, are these radio buttons, they determine how many different, by what how many different steps we're going to take or display in the graph. And so they're called ticks in D3, and this is a D3 application. So it just makes it more dynamic. So anyway, that's how this page works, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.